Welcome to Endoscopy on Air 2020. Watch Edward Seward from London in the diagnosis of multiple colonic polyps. Uh, this is a 51-year-old gentleman who had a, uh, a limited colonoscopy, a flexible sigmoidoscopy that revealed a 15 millimeter polyp in his distal colon, but nobody's had a look at his proximal colon. Uh, so we're going in with a, with a very exciting scope. This is the Pentax GI scope, and it's uh, equipped with scope pilots, uh, which is the image you can see on the uh, bottom right of your screens, the green snake. Uh, and uh, what that image is telling you is that we're in about the mid-transverse at the moment. Uh, we've, we've viewed the right-hand side of the colon, everything is normal. Uh, we've got the OptiVista processor, uh, which is giving us these beautiful images, which we know are really important for adenoma detection and characterization. And most excitingly for us is we're using the discovery AI tool, and you've seen a lot of uh, AI demonstrated uh, in the colon uh, already today. So this is uh, the Pentax version. And this is a very impressive piece of equipment. Um, I think 288 patients with about 800 polyps, uh, producing about 100,000 images that were fed into the AI to train it. Uh, the majority of the polyps were small sessile lesions. So we're hopeful that it's able to detect those polyps that often uh, defy uh, detection, even by an experienced endoscopist. And Lovely. Ed, would you like to talk us through about the, the GI uh, that is in this uh, colonoscope? Yeah. So um, in uh, modern colonoscopy, there's a lot of discussion about distal attachments, about using caps or cuffs, uh, endo cuff, to try and improve um, uh, uh, adenoma detection. But there is a disadvantage with distal attachments. With endo cuff, about 5% of the time, uh, you can't get round, particularly if there's sigmoid diverticular disease, the increase in the um, uh, diameter of the scope is just too much, uh, and you can't manipulate the scope around the uh, uh, around the corners. So uh, then the endocuff has to come off. The big advantage of GI, so it's a collapsible balloon that sits just uh, beneath the tip of the scope. And what it does is it not only flattens out the folds, making it easier for me to uh, spot any polyps, but also it um, stabilizes the scope in the middle of the uh, lumen. And that can really assist uh, you when you're applying therapy. So, so th this is a fairly obvious polyp that uh, I don't think you'd struggle to, to spot. It's not, the stalk's not that long. So um, I probably won't pre-clip here. I'll just, could I take the Carlock needle, please? Thank you. So if you've got a really nice long stalk, you can, um, uh, pre-clip uh, a pedunculated polyp, uh, and essentially you just put a clip on the base, um, and then that guarantees that the polyp removal is fairly bloodless. Always my anxiety doing that is that you might uh, have not enough space to actually complete the resection safely. So uh, actually I'm going to do the more, slightly more tried and tested method of... Uh, of injecting, first of all, and then getting a snare around. And obviously, again, putting the polyp into the six o'clock position helps on stability. So, so that's a perfect position in there. Yeah. Uh, the date about clipping prophylactically for bleeding is a little bit of heterogeneous. Uh, there was a systematic review in 2018 that demonstrated okay, clipping anyway. post polypectomy probably didn't make much of a okay, difference. A but recently in March, there was a paper from South Korea that um, it was quite favorable on uh, the pre clipping before polypectomies on reducing post polypectomy bleed. 
So what we try to do here in the unit is always inspect the defect very well. And if you see a, a visible, yeah. obviously if there is oozing, clipping is an advantage, but if you see a visible vessel on the defect, probably clipping would be uh, good to prevent delayed okay. post polypectomy. So what we and what we try and do here is we open past the uh, lesion, and you try and allow the polyp head to uh, to fall into the snare. I'm just going to go on the other side. Actually, that's going to be easier, isn't it? Yes. So you can see the the polyp head is just falling in. Okay, and just close there, please. Exactly, and it's very good to have a very good visualization of what oh. you are doing all the time. Yeah. So you have a full control uh, that the snare is safe, that you are not getting any mu normal mucosa trap, therefore the complication rates are much less. And, and really, when you're removing a sort of large-ish pedunculated polyp like this, you, you need to try and give your histopathologist plenty of stalk just in case there's extension down the uh, stalk. So right. we're just going to remove that now. And then we will go back to room two that I think they are waiting at. Okay. 100, 200. Excellent. Or... So back to room right. two. Histology showed multiple tubular adenomas and follow-up will be in three years as per guidelines. Here you see the instruments and devices used. And finally, this is Edward Stewart's recommended reading.